This week's parasha is Parashat Mitzorah. Usually parash, the parashiot of Tazriya and Mitzorah are read together, but this year, because it's a leap year, we read Tazriya last week and we're reading Mitzorah this week. In Parashat Tazriya, we start to hear about Sarat, and in Mitzorah, we hear the rest of the laws of Sarat. Sarat is a skin disease, and it's a disease, disease that's given by God for a human flaw. And because it's a disease that's given by God, medicine can't cure it. In order to get rid of sarat, a person needs to fix their flaw and fix what's wrong with them. Sarat is given for a lot of reasons, and the Gemara lists all of them, but it's most commonly given for Lashon Hara. So sarat is associated with Lashon Hara. But interestingly, sarat is also associated with Geula with being saved, with saving, redemption. This week's Hafsara is from Melachim Bet Perek Zayin. And in Melachim Bet Perek Zayin, we're at the point in Bnei Israel's history when there's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is made up of 12 tribes, and we call them the kingdom of Israel. And the southern kingdom is made up of two tribes, and we call them the kingdom of Yehuda. And in the kingdom of Israel, they're really not the best people. And at this point in history, in Perek Zayin of Melachim Bet, the kingdom of Aram is fighting Israel, and Aram is winning, and the people of Israel are starving. It's very hard to buy food. It's very, very expensive, and the food that they're getting is terrible quality. And so the people are starving, the people are dying, because they're having this war with Aram. And the king of Israel, Yehoram, is upset. Because during his time, there's an Avi who performs crazy miracles. He's not doing anything to save them. So Yehoram goes to Elisha Hanavi, who's famous for his incredible miracles. And he complains to him, and he blames Elisha for this. And he basically points his finger at Elisha, saying, you know, you're not doing anything to help us. Elisha says, God's going to get involved. At this time tomorrow... One se'ah of flour is going to cost one shekel, and two se'ah of barley is going to cost one shekel. The price of food is going to drop tomorrow. And the king doesn't believe it, and the people that are with him don't believe it. And one of the king's officers mocks Elisha and says that it's not going to happen, says that it's not possible. And so Elisha tells him, it's going to happen, and you are going to see it, but you will not eat any of it. And the next day comes. And there are four people with Sarat who live outside the city. If you have Sarat, you're not allowed to live with people. You need to exile yourself until you become better. So there are four people with Sarat who are outside the city because they're not allowed to be in the city. And they're also starving. And so they come to a decision. Let's go to the people of Aram. Let's go to the army of Aram we'll turn ourselves over, we'll say that we're on their side, something, and maybe they'll give us a little bit of food because, I don't know, we're not getting any food out here anyway, so maybe if we go to them, they'll give us some food. So they go to the camp of Aram, where the army is camping out to fight B'nai Israel, right? The Aramean camp. And they find the camp deserted. All of the soldiers of Aram fled, and they left all of their stuff behind. And the people of Sarat can't believe it. They just stumbled across an empty camp, an empty army camp. And there's gold there and silver and clothing and food. And the people with Sarat are going crazy, right? They're taking things, they're enjoying it. And then they stop and they say, maybe we should tell people. They go to the king's gate and they tell the guard at the gate what they saw. And the king is a little bit wary, and he said, oh, it's probably a, a sketch, right? They pretended to flee so that we'd go, and then they're going to attack us, so they send somebody to go check. And they say, no, really, really, they left. They're gone. And the, the, Ara, Ari, the soldiers of Aram left their stuff all over. And Bnei Israel go there. And what Elisha said came true. People are selling flour for one shekel and barley for one shekel. And the officer that mocked Elisha was standing by the gate, protecting the gate. And he got trampled by Bnei Israel on their way to get this food. And so Elisha was right. You're going to hear what's going on, but you're not going to be able to enjoy it. He got trampled 
and he died because he doubted God and his miracles. And so these four people with Sara'at saved B'nai Israel. They were the ones who delivered the message of hope to B'nai Israel. They brought the Geulah for this specific problem, right? They're the ones who saved B'nai Israel from their famine because they delivered the news that the, the people of Aram left and that there's food everywhere, right? They delivered the Geulah. And there's another story about Geula coming from a Mitzorah. In Gemara Sanhedrin, Samech Aleph, Daf Samech Aleph, a rabbi sees Eliyahu Hanabi. And he asks Eliyahu Hanabi, when's Mashiach coming? Right, the question we all wonder. And Eliyahu says, go ask him. And, you know, <laughs> the rabbi says, okay, where is he? He says, he's sitting outside the gate of Rome, and he has an illness. The people who sit outside the city and who have an illness are the people with Sara'at. And it's interesting because Mashiach is sitting with the Matsuraim, the people with Sara'at, outside the city. The rabbi goes to speak to him, but that's not the point of the story, right? Geula is coming from outside the city, from outside the camp. Mashiach, the ultimate Geula, is going to be sitting with people with Sara'at. That's not what we think. That's not how we associate Geula. That's not how we associate Mashiach. Right? These two stories, these two stories show us that Geula is kind of associated with Mitzuraim. And so I think the reason why is because sometimes you need to be on the outside to really see things clearly. Sometimes when you're in a situation and you're so entrenched in it, you can't find the way out. You can't figure out a solution and you can't save yourself. You need somebody on the outside to help you, to give you a different perspective and to bring your geula for your specific problem. And I think the reason why the Gemara and like Melachim Bet, geula is associated with Sarat because these people are on the outside. So they're able to see clearly. And sometimes when we're in a situation, we're not able to. So hopefully we could take the message from the Haftarah and from the Gemara and from this week's parasha and not ridicule the people on the outside and respect them. And when they offer their help, we should take it because sometimes the people that you think are the least likely to save you are the ones who are going to bring your geula. Shabbat shalom.